Um, the trio uh, I have on the ship, Martin Wind and Tim Horner and I, just did a new CD on the Azika record label. And uh, that uh, is coming out any day now. And we're hoping to do some more work with that. Um, I was nominated again for Grammy number no. five for a piece I wrote for piano and orchestra, uh, kind of a jazz piece. Um, it was done at Temple University, but we also did it at, uh, later at Cal State Fullerton, where I teach. And um, uh, there are some trumpet solos on it, but it's predominantly a piano and orchestra piece in the style. The orchestra is a Mozart size orchestra, but it's, it's a jazz piece. It goes into the Latin and it's, it, it does all the things I love. Um, I just finished a score for a movie called Rough Cut, which is uh, an interesting story about a Singapore jazz singer who wants to get back in the business, but her husband doesn't want her to. And uh, it's a small film. I'm, I'm not sure how many theaters it'll get in. But uh, then I'm getting ready to do a big band project with my own big band for the first time. So I'm excited about that. Um, in addition, I want to mention that um, I am good friends with a singer in L.A. named Frida Payne. And she did a record called Band of Gold in the 70s, which was a hit record. But she's really a great jazz singer. And we just did a, a record for Mac Avenue Jazz, full strings and horns and big band and everything. And that's coming out in a few months. And Frida's awesome. She's like 68 years old. She looks like she's about 50. She can do back bends. I mean, she's spectacular. She sounds great. She's comes out of Ella sound-wise. She sings the blues a little bit, kind of like Dinah. Um, she's got a little Carmen in her. She's, uh, she's really, really special. And um, the trio record I'm doing, I um, met these guys when I was teaching at Temple at Philadelphia, Martin Wind and Tim Horner, and they happen to be on the cruise now, and so we did a set here. Um, I did it for a record label in Cleveland called uh, Azika Records, and it's uh, originals and standards, and some of the standards are more modern tunes, like um, One is the Loneliest Number that Three Dog Night did, and uh, Bjork All is Full of Love, which is a... Uh, it's got a funny video where the two robots are uh, kind of embracing each other, and then her face is on each robot. It's, it's a, a funny video. But she's quite a great songwriter, and I, I enjoy her music very much. And I'm, I'm always interested in finding you know, pop tunes that I can put a little bit of my grit in there and, and do something that would reflect the things that I like. So uh, that's coming out in a couple weeks, and uh, we're going to go tour and support it and hope people enjoy it. Well, I've scored a few films, and uh, the experience was, um, this particular film was a, a very low-budget film, so it was scored entirely on the computer, and um, it's really how most music is made today in the media. Um, it's a software package that you look at the computer, and you've got a keyboard that's connected to it, and you can see a quick time video of the footage. And for example, if it's a cue that needs a string orchestra sound, you call up a sound that sounds like a string orchestra and you play it on the keyboard as the picture is going. And you basically do timings before, which is what is called spotting the film. You know, the music, we're going to start here, and we're going to end here, and it's going to build here, and maybe it'll get quiet here. And you usually do that with the director in advance. Then you go home, and you just quote write the music, but very often you're just playing it into the machine and then tweaking it. And it's actually very, uh, you don't really have to worry as much about um, timings as much as you did in the old days, because you can just change the tempo, or you could just take out a bar here and there. It's actually, in some ways, easier to do. It's harder in that you have to assemble rather vast libraries of sounds. Uh, a lot of the movies you see today, a lot of it's not music. A lot of it is sound effects. You know, if you think about um, L.A. Law or the, uh, a lot of the mystery movies, you hear a particular sound that's a signature sound. And these are sounds that you buy or you develop on your own. Um, and I enjoy that kind of work. It's a lot of fun. 
Um, I did a film two years ago that I enjoyed a lot more in terms of musically because it was uh, a jazz film called On the Shoulders of Giants. Uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar produced it and directed it, and it was a big band score. And it was about the Harlem Wrens basketball team. In the 20s and 30s, they toured America because they were uh, a black basketball team. There were no leagues that they were allowed to play in. If you were a black baseball player, you could play in the Negro Leagues. But the, the NBA and before that, the National Basketball League did not allow black players. So they had to barnstorm on their own, and they had to literally convince people to play them. They sometimes played college teams. They sometimes played semi-professional teams. They played the Harlem Globetrotters, which were considered the best black basketball team, and they beat them. And they also beat the original Celtics, which were out of New York, which were considered the finest white male basketball team. And uh, they beat them. So they really did establish that they were the greatest team of all time. And then when the NBA started and integrated, well, before the NBA started integrating black players, none of these players could play in it. So they fell on hard times and disbanded, and a couple of the players did hook up in the NBA later on, but by that time their careers were almost over. So it's a real bittersweet story, and it's also a story about Harlem and its absolute musical and cultural magnificence in the teens, 20s, and 30s in America. And it's, it's downfall, and it's come back in some ways, but uh, um, it's, it's always been a real struggle for great culture and music to survive in, in New York and everywhere else.